Hello everyone, this is Magnuson150 here saying what's up. I'm back finally to Pokemon, um, so let's get started with this battle. Alright, so found someone on Cerebi. His name is Jack3 on Cerebi, um, so he's the one I'm going to battle. And there we go. Let the battle begin. Hey everybody, newcomers, people who are fond of Pokemon, or those who want to be up to date. This is Magnuson150 Anthony here, creator of Magnuson World, ready to start this battle. So, I send out Crobat, he sends out his Azelf. Now, of course, I kind of pre out predicted this one because I thought maybe he is going to explode with explosion, but he didn't. Um, so that's why I went into a sub in the first place, just to be on the safe side. He decided to go with a Ice Punch. So, of course, right there and then, I know I'm dealing with an attack only as elf, usually. And it's usually the case, but, you know, I thought there was a one time, because I, I even do it sometimes, you know, send him out and go kaboom, right? But, uh, nope, not this time, so I decided to switch out of there. I was thinking of going to Drift Blim, so I decided to go to Drift Blim, just so he could, he's pretty, usually pretty good, she's usually pretty good at absorbing some hits, but, which I found interesting, because he uses Toxic. The person used Toxic in this one. So that was kind of interesting, but I also had something up my sleeve also for you too, as Elf. I decided to use Will-O-Wisp. And, well, what do you know? He's burnt. <laughs> yes, he is now burnt. Um, basically, burn puts down your attack massively, which is a big owie, so be careful. Um, so now, he's burnt and I'm poisoned. Okay, well, he actually switches out and goes to Jolteon, which is a total bummer for me, because, well, I was hoping to do some damage to his Azelf. But I did get a nice uh, special defense lower on his Jolteon, which I guess I'm kind of proud of. So now, I don't really know whether I want to stay in there and let Jolteon take me out or not. So I thought, maybe I should save Driftblim for some other Pokemon. So I decided to wall him using Magnezone. Use is usually a risky thing to do, because you don't really know what the Jolteon knows. So, it's kind of a risk to do so, but it's a pretty good wall, since Magnezone does have okay defenses and very good resistance to Jolteon's attacks, usually. So, as predicted, he was going to switch, and I thought he would, because whether the Jolteon has some other move or uh, Dig, that would have been his only option, mostly. So, nope, he didn't, so he switches back to Azelf. So... In predicting this, I decided to go into a substitute, which is a pretty okay move on my part. That's usually a good thing to do, just to be on the safe side. At least, that's for me, it is. And he actually goes for a Fire Blast right on me, which is a big ouch. See, I had no idea his Azelf had that, so that's kind of a surprise to me. So I was wondering why he sent his burned Azelf back out, if it was a full attacker, full, you know, physical, but he's not. So I decided to go in. I stayed in anyway and went for the Thunderbolt. Since I had the sub up, why not? and I did some massive damage to him and well he actually lived it which was pretty alright but of course the burn took him out so that's a pretty good start on me for my on my part I was hoping to 6-0 this match uh, but for the record he said he played horribly so I was like oh that stinks well if you want we can battle again so yeah we did battle again so part two will be up soon um, on my on our on our rematch and it will have music instead of me talking through it so now he sends out Gliscor uh, damn it! Yeah, damn it is right, because my Magnezone is electric and steel, dealing with a ground and flying. Not a good mix, especially when ground does about four times damage to me. So I decide to switch out, get out of there with Magnezone, and send out my Porygon Z. Now, why I chose that instead of Drift Blim, I didn't think he was actually going to hit me with Earthquake. So, but he did, funny enough. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I overthought that, but I kind of did. Um, so Porygon Z had to take the full grunt of that attack, which was pretty massive damage. But I got the special attack boost, so I decided to go in with the Ice Beam of Doom, which is about four times the amount of damage to a Ground and Flying type. So he is gone, out of the park, out of here, touchdown. See ya, boy. Pretty much. Yeah, no, that was kind of random. But anyway, continuing on with this battle. Um, so he sends out Scyther. Now, I don't know why he sent out Scyther, but he did anyway. 
Um, he probably thought that it was kind of a fluke that I was faster, so he thought maybe Scyther could outspeed me. I guess, right? It's a pretty good guess, anyway. But, um, no, it totally... he Scyther came to save the day, but totally died instead, unfortunately. So, he is gone. And then, he sends out Jolteon, hoping for at least an attack, I guess, to take out Porygon-Z. But, well, when you're dealing with 400 special attack and a Scarf, I don't know. And Modest Nature? I don't know. So I decided to stay in there anyway and use Ice Beam, and I got a crit, which was pretty nice. So, three of his Pokemon are now officially owned by my Porygon Z. Continuing on, he sent out Empoleon. Now, that just screwed me over, because um, I actually don't have anything to counter him, believe it or not. Or a water type in general, actually, which is a total bummer um, on my team at that moment in time. So I had to think a little more about what, who am I going to switch to. So I thought, okay, Crobat has good... You know, he doesn't have a good special defense, but I thought maybe he could just take the hit. So, because, you know, my Crobat has naive nature, I believe, which is not good on special defense. But he had good HP, so I thought that could kind of save me. So he did survive. He lives that one. The Black Sludge gives me some health. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try to hypnosis this bad boy. But it totally failed, and he just wiped me out with an Ice Beam, which pretty much canceled out my 6-0, so... That's pretty good on his part. He's pretty lucky. He should probably keep him pulling on his team, to be honest. Um, but he should consider putting a little more into defense, um, even though he has Glyce score for that. But the only reason I got through it was because of an Ice Beam. So, I mean, his team is all right. Um, so, let's see. I sent out Infernape, thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down proudly, <laughs> since his Empoleon seems to have a good grasp on my team. But he switches to Togekiss. Now, I have no idea, mind you, what kind of Togekiss I'm dealing with here. Um, but I did pretty good massive damage to the Togekiss, believe it or not. Now, why White Herb on an Infernape? On a, on him, especially because, you know, it used to annoy me every time someone sent in a Intimidate Pokemon and it put down my attack, so that's why I did that mostly. And, well, Thunder Punch of Doom came in and saved the day. So there goes Togekiss, and his last Pokemon now stands as Empoleon. Now, of course, Empoleon usually is good at special defense and HP, so I don't know whether the HP part was going to save him, but I was thinking, well, my close combat is probably better. So I went with close combat to finish off the battle, and, well, I finished it off. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, check out for part two, which is our rematch, basically, with Pokemon Black and White Music in that one. And uh, rate, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much. No. If I switched to Infernape, if I knew he was going to use Ice Beam, I would have been a 6-0.